A former low-level aide to Mark Meadows, Cassidy Hutchinson, has testified in front of the January 6th committee, and the left lost their minds. For them, Hutchinson's testimony was a bombshell with revelations that further implicate President Trump's guilt for the events of that day. Her testimony was used by the left to create a political narrative. In reality, her comments were hearsay, third-hand stories that within minutes have been easily dismantled. Multiple people have already come forward to refute many of her claims. But the committee wanted her testimony to be heard without real-time cross-examinations, further proving this whole thing is nothing but a political sham. Many people are wondering what was going through her head during the hearing. Well, we have someone here who can help shed some light on it. Behavior and body language expert Gregory Hartley joins us now, also a former U.S. Army interrogator. Gregory, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me here, Hogan. Yeah, you're dead on this hearsay. Yeah, uh, let me just jump right out of the gate and tell you, in intelligence, when you use hearsay, and we do, we want to know who told you that, when did they tell you that, who told them. There's a ton of questions you sure. ask about it. You don't soft pedal it. Well, I'm going to play some bites for you, and I want you to comment on them as you take a look at exactly how 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 she was moving and 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 and, and moving around during the the hearing. So I want to start with probably the the biggest moment in yesterday's hearing when Hutchinson told the committee she'd heard Trump was so enraged his motorcade wouldn't take him to the Capitol on January 6th that he attacked his own Secret Service agents and tried to grab the steering wheel. I'm the effing president. Take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. Two Secret Service agents um, say, um, you know, that, that you were actually referencing there, say that, that that never happened. So from personal experience, by the way, being in the beast, it's, it's impossible basically to grab the steering wheel from the back of the beast or go after someone in the front seat. But she was pretty stoic there. I didn't notice much, but you're the expert. So what can you see in her body language there? Oh, I see a whole lot. Let me, first of all, say fight or flight is there. And we expect that. She's sitting in front of Congress, which she's 26. I would be too. So I see respiration increase and shallow in the upper part of her lungs. That's a good sign of fight or flight. You see the blink rate increase, that's fight or flight. So let's skip that. Let's go to when she talks about Trump, she does a very primitive thing that we all do. She pushes her tongue through her lips. Desmond Morris, who was a zoologist who studied humans, called that baby's first rejection. Usually we see that associated with deception. She also pauses after that tongue jut before she says anything about Trump in every one of these clips. That would make me concerned. It doesn't mean she's lying. It means that I have concern. And again, this is there's a lot more that you could go into here. There's no passion. There's no animation. And her mannerisms, her hands moving and illustrating don't match her story exactly. But it's her, not her story. It's secondhand information. All right. This is very fascinating. So another moment of note we want to get to. Liz Cheney displayed a handwritten note which Hutchinson testified that she wrote. Here she is explaining the contents of that note. Mark had handed me the note card with one of his pens and started dictating a statement for the president to potentially put out. And, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Uh, there are two phrases on there, one illegal and then one without proper authority. The illegal phrase was the one that Mr. Meadows had dictated to me. Mr. Hirschman had chimed in and said, also put without legal authority. This, too, has already been refuted. Former Trump White House lawyer Eric Hirschman claims he wrote that note during a meeting at the White House on the afternoon of January 6th. So did her body language give any indication either way on whether she was telling the truth here? Not really a whole lot, because what we see here is her forehead is smooth. Usually when a child is trying to get approval that you, you believe something they're saying, they'll hold their forehead up. And we do it as adults, too. You do it when you're talking to people all the time. We don't see that in here. We see her hand moving and trying to illustrate what she's thinking. She still wouldn't, but she did say the very best indicator is all the rest of her comments are telling, their downward tone, and she says, dictated to me at the very end, you listen to what somebody says often, their tells and their words. That's the best indicator. 
This is absolutely fascinating. We really appreciate uh, your time on this. I got one more for you, though. Uh, Hutchinson recounted how at one point President Trump's anger at Attorney General Bill Barr got the better of it. He motioned for me to come in and then pointed towards the front of the room near the fireplace mantle and the TV where I first noticed there was ketchup dripping down the wall and there's a shattered porcelain plate on the floor. The valet had articulated that the president was extremely angry at the attorney general's AP interview and had thrown his lunch against the wall. Trump himself uh, refutes this, uh, posting on True Social. Her story of me throwing food is also false, and why would she have to clean it up? I hardly knew who she was. So a lot of hand movements in that one, Gregory. What's your take on that part of the testimony? Listen to that lilt all through the story. She's lilting up at the end, and then he took me to see this and by the TV. And then she changes word patterns. Always a red flag for me. She changed tense. She said, had valet, the valet had articulated instead of the valet told me this. She's been saying said, said, said. Now she goes to, there's a word pattern shift. That's a red flag. You jump on that anytime you hear it. This is absolutely fascinating. Behavior and body language expert Gregory Hartley, thanks so much. Really appreciate it tonight. Real pleasure, Uncle. Thank you.